Hey guys, I wanted to do a really quick video on Menetrier's disease. This is a disease I noticed that shows up in QBanks but really isn't discussed uh, that much in a lot of the review sources. And I feel like this is a really simple disease to understand once you understand the basic concept of what's going on. We'll cover this in about three or four points, so let's jump right into this. The first point is that how Menetrier's disease works is you have excessive gastrointestinal TGF alpha production. And we know that uh, TGF alpha, one of the primary locations, if not the most abundant location that TGF alpha comes from, is the GI tract. So you're having excessive TGF alpha production. Now remember that TGF alpha production, TGF alpha production, actually causes epithelium production. Epithelium, let's say development, because it can even help with differentiation of various epithelium. Development and then say proliferation. So the buildup and then uh, eventual differentiation of that epithelium. And specifically this is involving the GI TGF alpha. So when you have a lot of this you can imagine that the epithelium of the the stomach specifically where the majority of it's coming from is going to cause hyperplasia of the epithelium. Well how does that present? It presents with hyperplasia of the foveolar surface mucus cells. So if you look at these pictures over here on the right is the normal. So this is a normal picture looking at the stomach and you can see the organization we'll just kind of keep it simple the very top part you'll see at the very top these are cells lined at the very top that produce mucus that protect the stomach from the um, acid that's produced from the cells coming within the uh, kind of in the deeper la layers the parietal cells and whatnot so these foveolar cells undergo hyperplasia because remember TGF alpha causes epithelium proliferation and differentiation so these foveolar cells basically hyper proliferate and too many form and what you end up with is a complete sloppy mess so you look over here this is in a patient with menetriase menetriase and in this situation you can see that there's been tons you notice that these uh, gastric pits that are formed at the bottom here and then forming the overall gland of the various cells that are involved here. We won't go through all the cells, that's more physiology. But notice that when you have a hyperproliferation of these foveolar um, surface mucus cells, you basically get glands all over the place and you have these cystic spaces that developed um, all throughout because it's so disorganized. Basically glands have taken over the entire um, the, and all the layers of the stomach. So that's the first thing you need to know. And then also, the next point is that with that comes a cerebriform enlargement of the rugal folds. So you know that in the stomach, here's two pictures. So this is ignoring the polyp that's right here. Don't look at the polyp. Let's just look at just looking at the rugal fold size. So this is kind of a typical rugal fold size. So there are these folds in the stomach and they're formed, if we go back here, they're formed from the pathology of these gastric pits that if you're looking over at the on the right where I'm drawing, it's going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And that's what ends up forming this rugae that you're seeing. This is the typical kind of size and how the rugae looks uh, throughout the stomach besides the uh, polyp that I said ignore that now let's go over to what happens when you have this excessive TGF alpha and you have the excessive production of the foveolar surface mucus cells when you have this of course you have glands all over the place and it's extremely unorganized now look at this there's no not only are they thickened but you see that they're kind of they're rough looking and if you were to look at this is a piece that's cut out but if you were to look at the stomach you would have saw that it has a more of a cerebriform look so instead of over here where it's very straight and, and more smooth you would see that the stomach rugae are kind of puffing up and they're kind of building on themselves and they're very unorganized like this oh, and they got the name cerebriform because remember the cerebrum of the brain this looks like basically brain tissue if you were to look at a bunch of it you would have saw that this looks like the cerebrum of the brain and this um, all really unorganized um, proliferation of these foveolar surface mucus cells causing this enlargement of the rugal folds increases your adenoma carcinoma risk okay that's important because compared to another similar um, hyperplastic gastroenteropathy compared to another similar one uh, Zollinger Ellison you do not have really too much of an adenocarcinoma risk whereas this one would have it in the stomach 
Okay, so the next point is that its effects are on the fundus and body, but the antrum is spared. That's super simple. Here's the basic uh, anatomy of the stomach. So when you look at path, uh, a histological slide, you have to make sure you take and look at from the fundus and from the body. If you were to take it down here at the antrum area, you would have saw that it is normal. You wouldn't have seen the, um, the rugal fold thickening and the uh, massive proliferation of the surface cells that cause that massive disorganization and glands all over the place. So know that the effects are only in the fundus and body, but the antrum is spared. And then another point is that it's a protein losing gastroenteropathy. So there's a ton of things that can go wrong in the gastric system that can result in protein losing. Think about it. Your gastric, your GI system, your GI system is involved with absorption. Absorption and then also breakdown. So you know when you take in foods, let's say, that there are protein components in that food and the proteins need to be broken down into the subsequent peptides before they can be absorbed. So how does this happen? It happens, it happens with pepsin in the stomach and then trypsin from the pancreas. Trypsin from the pancreas, which then goes into the um, small intestine at the duodenum, but it's produced from the pancreas. So these two things work together, and it starts with pepsin to break it down kind of into smaller segments, and then the trypsin finishes the job and breaks those smaller segments into either even smaller segments yet. And that is how you get um, protein, the protein peptide segments to be absorbed into the body. The problem is when you have a really unorganized stomach mucosa with rugae that are all over the place and really large and these surface um, foveolar mucus cells are basically all over the place. You can imagine that you're having increased mucus and you're having so much increased mucus. Remember there's proteins in mucus. So first of all there's where some of your proteins are going. Also keep in mind that when you're making all of these surface fo uh, foveolar cells it uh, requires various components within the mucus and of course as you increase foveolar cells, this is important, as you increase these foveolar cells at the surface of the stomach, these will eventually overtake the entire stomach um, lining, the epithelium of the stomach, and it will thus decrease cells like parietal cells, think about it, chief cells, all these kind of things, it will eventually overtake throughout the whole stomach and you're going to have a decrease in these cells that are pivotal that are extremely important in protein breakdown. So now all of a sudden we cannot take in proteins because we can't break down the proteins. If you can't break down the proteins, you're going to have protein loss and you're thus going to have swelling. So protein losing gastroenteropathy, how does that how does that present? Well, first of all, we don't have any proteins in our body. So decreased proteins means that you're decreasing the colloid osmotic pressure the colloid osmotic pressure in the blood, right, or in the capillaries, you could say. And what's that going to do? When you decrease the solute concentration, say this is two um, things right here and there's some fluid in here. In this situation, you would have a lot of protein. So this is a normal situation, okay? And when basically with all of these proteins, because there's so many protein solutes, that means there's less water. So that means water would tend to want to go into this space because there's not as much water just following a concentration gradient and a solute gradient. Whereas in this situation, let's say here's all that there is. There's only three here. Well, now there's way more water level. And so water wants to kind of go out to balance out whatever area that, well, that, will, that would be. And in this situation, where because there's no proteins going through the system, you're going to have interstitial swelling. And here you see the edema that results from that. Okay, so that was the end of this video. This is a really short video, and that is um, pretty much all the high yield points you need to know for Menetrier's disease. I'll see you in another video. Bye, guys.